Today, I'm gonna to be going over negative keywords in Google Ads and everything you need to know about negative keywords. So to get started, you can add negative keywords to the account level, to the campaign level, and to the ad group level. So I'll go over all three of those today in this video. And usually when I'm looking for negative keywords, I will either go into an existing search or shopping campaign, and that is going to allow me to view all of the search terms under insights and reports. So if we click on our campaign, go to our search terms, you can look all time, you can look last seven days. Sometimes I will do this on on a daily basis, especially for new accounts that I'm working on. If we scroll down here, you're gonna see all of my search terms here. So we scroll over and we look at top search terms by impression. We can see the different search terms that are coming in. And usually what I'm looking for is anything that doesn't match a service that I provide or anything that doesn't match a product that I'm selling. So if you are managing advertisements, whether it's for e-commerce, whether it is for lead generation, no matter what your goals are, you're generally looking for things that are gonna be the search intent is not in the right place. You're looking for competitor keywords. You're looking for something like this, pool supply store. I don't sell any pool supplies for my fake pool business. So the very first thing I would do is come in here and add a negative keyword. So you could select this and add a negative keyword. There are three different negative keyword match types. They perform different than how a standard search keyword that you're targeting will perform. So when you do a broad match negative keyword, if I do something like supply, then any single search that somebody does that includes the word supply will no longer trigger my advertisements. So this would basically exclude any person who's looking for a pool supply store, pool supplies, different things like that. Although you have to add multiple keywords, multiple negative keywords if you wanna do supply and supplies and even misspelling. So if you do something like this, this could still potentially trigger your advertisement. So the close variance that occur within the standard search campaigns where if I'm typing something like, or I'm targeting a keyword like pool supply store, Google will match this even if people use misspellings, plurals, all sorts of different variations. That is not the case with negative keywords. It uses the exact word that we have. So a broad match negative keyword would basically exclude any search term that includes supply forever. So we could add this to our campaign, we can add this to an individual ad group, or we can add this to a negative keyword list and we can continue to build a negative keyword list and apply it to multiple campaigns. Okay, and then the other thing that I wanna go over is if you are targeting broad match negative keywords, in the way that phrase match actually exclude the specific phrase when we are using a phrase match negative keyword, so somebody actually has, has to have supply store in order as a phrase in their search term, if you wanna exclude two specific words, so you do something like supply store, this might not be the best example, but this would basically exclude any search term that contains the word supply and the word store anywhere in it. So that's how broad match keywords differ from phrase match when it comes to a negative keyword match type. A quick 30 second promotion. If you like my content, I have a Google ads course available, 21 lessons over 10 hours for $34.99. You can access it by going to surfsidepppc.com slash course. That will give you all the information you need to run successful Google ads campaigns. If you're interested in learning how to drive more leads for your business, join Surfside Inbound. It's $4.99 a month. It's available on Patreon. It's available through my YouTube membership and you'll get access to all of my premium content, including a five and a half hour inbound marketing course. Thank you. And let's get Get back to the video. So if we come over here and we just go back to what our initial, so pool supply store near me, if we add this, this as an exact match negative keyword would exclude this exact search term and this exact search term only. If I do something like supply store and I do a phrase match negative keyword, then anytime somebody includes this phrase supply store within their search term, then our ad will not be triggered. So generally when I'm adding negative keywords, for the most part, I am using broad match, something like this, or I am using exact match. So exact match I will use at times for brand names and different things like that, but generally I'm using broad match negative keywords for the most part. Sometimes I add exact match negative keywords if they are getting a lot of impressions, but doing something like supply would exclude any of the keyword variations where people are looking for that type of term. So if you're wondering where do I, how do I know whether or not to add something as a negative keyword? Sometimes you need to use your own discretion and just have an understanding of, okay, the search intent for this specific 
search term that somebody is looking up is not going to be exactly what I want to target. So even something like this pool inspection, sometimes with a pool inspection, I will add this as a negative keyword pool companies. Sometimes I will add that as a negative keyword, mainly because this could include people looking for jobs, people looking for how to start a pool company, people who may just be looking for about the pool companies in their area. So usually these types of search terms I am excluding because there's no search intent behind them. Best pool companies near me is somebody who is actively looking for a pool company. This may also be somebody looking for a job, but at the same time, there's going to be much more people looking for services who are searching like this. So generally what I'm looking for when it comes to a service-based business with a, a specific location is I am looking for search terms that don't include near me, that don't include a location, or don't have some type of search intent that would basically imply that this is somebody who is looking for pool, swimming pool services. So even like service pool, I will remove that. Pool line repair is fine. Best pool companies near me is fine. Pool service near me, pool leak detection, pool pump maintenance. So here's a good one, pool repair, Spartanburg, South Carolina. If you start seeing locations that aren't relevant to your business, then you remove those cities or you remove these states. Sometimes when I start a brand new campaign, I will go in and exclude all of the state abbreviations besides the one I'm targeting. And I'll also exclude some of the largest cities, especially like surrounding cities. So if I'm doing a campaign in Los Angeles, for example, I may say, okay, let's exclude Las Vegas. Let's exclude uh, maybe Denver. So some of these areas, Portland. So I'll take some of the largest metro areas around whichever city I'm targeting and basically say, okay, if I'm targeting Los Angeles, I want to make sure that people that are searching for things in other states or people that are searching for things, even if it's you know a city in California, San Francisco, San Diego, if I'm not serving those areas, I want to add them as negative keywords because I don't want somebody searching in Los Angeles who's looking up that location to actually find my advertisement if they're not interested in my services in that specific city. So hopefully that all makes sense as far as finding the right negative keywords. And then as I'm adding negative keywords, for the most part, I'm just adding them directly to a campaign. These are ones where I would add exact match negative keywords because pool inspection near me could be a very good keyword for me to target. So I don't want to use inspection. I obviously don't want to use pool because if I use pool, my my ads will never show. So companies, again, swimming pool companies near me is a good keyword. So we add the exact match variety of this. This is a good example of when to add exact match negative keywords. The other thing we can do is start building a negative keyword list. So you can see I already have one here. So let's just say we add these three to our negative keyword list. You could also save a new list and apply negative keywords. So we'll click on save here. And then let's come over to tools. So under tools and we go to our shared library here, you're gonna see exclusion lists. And this is where we can find our negative keyword list. You can see I have one here for pools. And I already started adding some here in another tutorial that I created. And you're gonna see most, for the most part, it's gonna be things where people are searching for specific companies, some of my fake competitors. And then you can start adding things like jobs. You can add things like Craigslist or some of these different things that people search pretty frequently. A lot of times I'll add things like Costco, Amazon, just because people search these so often that I just wanna make sure I'm not targeting any of these specific keywords when people are searching them. So you can add negative keywords here to a negative keyword list. And the reason why I like using negative keyword lists is you can apply them to multiple campaigns. So if I created a new search campaign, maybe I'm doing separate search campaigns in different locations, then I can make sure that I am using my negative keyword list for different campaigns. So I do have this set up in several client accounts where I have like a master negative keyword list, just all sorts of different search terms that have come in over the years that I now have, have built up this, this huge list of negative keywords. And it really does help go a long way in optimizing the campaign and making sure that your ads are running smoothly and you're not getting a bunch of irrelevant search terms coming in. A negative keyword list is also really important if you're targeting broad match keywords. That is, you're gonna get a ton of search terms coming in. So if you are targeting broad match keywords, then just make sure you're, you're looking at your search terms report frequently within here and consistently adding negative keywords. The same thing with shopping campaigns. So shopping campaigns will give you a ton of search terms. I am generally a little bit more broad with shopping terms because usually people are looking for something like pool supplies, pool chemicals. And if people are searching those for shopping, I don't add those as negative keywords. I'm looking for things that are getting impressions and getting clicks that would not be relevant to the actual products I sell. So when it comes to a shopping campaign where you're selling physical products, people are gonna look for those differently because a transactional keyword is gonna be different than it is on the service side. So for example, you're selling 
workout equipment, you would want to target basically every single keyword that people might be searching. Somebody might be looking for dumbbells or barbells or something like that, or just typing in workout equipment. Those aren't things where I would add a negative keyword, even though the search term isn't necessarily like, you know, best workout equipment for small garages. And you can send someone right to a landing page that says that that's really more on the search side. But when it comes to shopping and when it comes to like performance max campaigns, you generally don't want to add too many negative keywords. And on to performance max. One of the main ways to actually optimize a performance max campaign is adding account level negative keywords. If you go to the admin section of your account and you go to account settings, you're going to see in here, you can actually add negative keywords to your account level for your search shopping and performance max campaigns up to 1000 negative keywords. You really have to watch the keywords that you're adding because like I said for performance max if you do have different goals for search shopping for, like depending on what you're targeting you generally don't want to exclude anything that are keywords that you want to be targeting based on the products that you're selling but if you're getting a bunch of irrelevant searches specifically in your shopping campaigns then what you want to do is just come here and add negative keywords here so the same way you would add them to a list the main thing to keep in mind about the account level is this will exclude it for every single search, shopping, and performance max campaign that you have. So the other thing I wanted to cover really quickly is symbols. So this is one of those ones that can be a little frustrating sometimes, but there are different types of symbols, and let's just use this example. So let's just say I'm, I wanna add this as a negative, I wanna add something like this as a negative keyword, or let's just say somebody's typing in like cafes near me, and I'm, I'm promoting my local cafe, for example. Now, if I were adding cafe as a negative keyword, maybe I don't wanna target cafe, let's use that as a better example for negative keywords. If you add something like cafe as a negative keyword, this is going to be a completely different keyword in Google's minds than this. So, I mean, obviously it's the same exact keyword when somebody's searching that, but you have to keep in mind that even with symbols like ambersands and things like that, Google is not gonna use ambersand the same way that they would use end. So if you wanna do something where, let's just say it's, I think I had one down there that was A and J. If you do A and J, this is not going to exclude A and J. This is not going to exclude AJ. So you need to really be careful with the symbols that you're using. Sometimes the apostrophes, I've had these where I add men's, men's, or things like that. And sometimes I still see the apostrophe search term coming in. I don't know if the apostrophe is one of them, but that's just one of those ones that I I've seen over the years. Now clicking on cancel here, one of the things that you can also do is let's just say we have like this pool maintenance and care ad group, and I have some crossover bef between my different We'll use this one. So pool leak detection. I don't want cleaning keywords to be in that. So the other thing we can do is come in here, add this as a negative keyword and add it to the ad group level and just say, I don't want anybody searching for cleaning, cleaners, anything like that. So you would have to add clean, cleaners, cleaning, all as separate negative keywords. And that would make sure that within our leak detection ad group or our liner replacement ad group, we're not having any of that crossover. And we could do the same thing with different ad groups as well. I do this at times, but I don't do it too broad. So if people are searching like pool services near me, I'm not going to take that pool services near me and exclude that exact match negative keyword from all my ad groups besides my pool service ad group. So I don't get that granular with it as far as adding the negative keywords, but you definitely want to go through your search terms, look for competitor keywords that you're getting, look for any locations that are irrelevant, anything that you see that is not something you want to be targeting. So you'll see my broad match keywords brought in a lot of different things that I don't want to be targeting. So a lot of times question keywords, you don't want to be targeting how to keywords. You don't want to be targeting even something like this patching vermiculite pool. That is somebody that's likely looking for a DIY project pool closing service. So I'm not even, so that just must be somebody who's closing their pool for the summer. So this would be something where it's like, okay, pool repair, pool cleaning. Let me add if I'm seeing this in my search terms, let me add a landing page for that. So all of these for the most part are pretty good keywords. Sometimes cost I won't do. Something like this, lost a foot of water overnight because even if I serve them in a pool leak detection advertisement, a lot of times people are looking for articles like how to, um, you know, what should I be doing in this situation? So you really have to look at the keyword. And the last but not least is take a keyword like this and see if there are any ads running. So we'll go over the symbols in a second here, but see if there are any ads running. Okay, so we have these ads running and then you'll see we get into some of these informative type of blog posts. So, and then people also ask. So if you're seeing a lot of things like this where it's like a blog post instead of the actual service where somebody typing in, pool leak detection, let's just say for example, well, they might be looking for a kit, but pool leak detection, 
local service ads, standard Google ads, and then as we come down here, you're gonna see these are all pool leak detection in Myrtle Beach. Now you do get some videos here, you do get some products here because people do search for those things. So just keep that in mind, pool leak detection, kit should be a negative keyword that you wanna add. So this is gonna wrap up our negative keyword video. I'm just gonna come over here really quickly. So symbols, it says you can use three symbols in your negative keywords, ambersands, accent marks, and asterisks. So the example that I used of an apostrophe doesn't even work here. So that is a completely ignored symbol. So that's a good thing. So a few different things that they have here. One of the main things is key negative keywords don't match to close variants. So that's like misspellings, sometimes synonyms, sometimes plurals, different things like that, which they do show on when you're targeting keywords standard. And let's see, that's pretty much all. I think we need to go over for negative keywords here. So build your negative keyword lists. You can apply them to different campaigns, add negative keywords to the account level. This is a great way for e-commerce companies to optimize their Google ads campaigns. Use your search and shopping campaigns to come up with a bunch of negative keyword ideas. And then the other thing you can do is start your campaign with a bunch of negative keywords. So if you go into tools and you go into the keyword planner and I just say something like swimming pool services, pool cleaning services, and we just take a couple of those things so, and then we'll do pool leak detection. So let's just say I want to target some keywords like this. We click on get results. You can enter your website here. If you come over here into refine keywords, sometimes what I'll look for in the refine keywords are negative keyword ideas. So over here, you're going to see things brand or non-brand. So immediately the brands, you can copy all of these brands right here. So Pentair, Hayward, Polaris, Raypack, all of these are gonna be things that I would not want to target. Now there may be people that are looking for some of these specific brands for some type of leak detection or something like that. That's fine, I still would not wanna target that. Anything that we see, now, so Infinity Pool, no, that's not one. Yeah, Angels Pools, Azure Pool. So some of these different ones that I see in here, I'm always getting rid of. Other brands, I'm getting rid of them as well. Pool equipment, so if there's any pool equipment you don't service, or you can also use this as a way to say, hey, we do things with pool pumps, we do things with pool heaters, we do things with pool filters, let's make sure we have landing pages for those. So the keyword planner can be a good way to say, yes, we wanna target this, let's make sure we add this as a negative keyword. So if you don't do anything related to pavers, then make sure you remove that keyword. Price, so that's definitely one I wanna get rid of. Hot tub, that would be separate unless you service hot tubs as well. Air, I'm not really sure what that is. So let's get rid of refined keywords. The other thing you can do is look at average monthly searches and see which of these different keywords here potentially are not things that you wanna target and you can add those as negative keywords as well. Sometimes if you look at the bid estimates, this is another way that you can do it, is looking at the lowest bid estimates. So starting with the highest are generally going to be some of the best keywords to target, not Gilbert, but cleaning pool after hurricane, that could potentially be a service that you provide. You're gonna see locations here because we're searching nationwide. But if you look at the top of page bid on the low range, sometimes you're gonna be able to find things here. So pool safety barrier inspections, if that's not something that you provide, then you make sure you get rid of that. Pool works, that's another one that we can get rid of. So you can always come in here as well and just say, okay, let's make sure, not the keyword contains, let's say the average monthly searches is greater than or equal to, let's just say 100, for example. Okay, so 912 keywords. We are looking by which ones have the lowest bid. Some of them have basically nothing. So let's just start where there's bids. Clean a sand filter, remove that. Sand filter maintenance, this exact match you could potentially remove, and then you can target sand filter maintenance near me. Winterizing in-ground pool, If again, you're gonna see some of these, how low that the keyword bids are, basically represents that advertisers are not bidding high on this specific keyword that is getting a lot of average monthly searches. On the other hand, you can also see what keywords advertisers are bidding high on, and it gives you the idea of, okay, these are probably the keywords I should target first. Okay, so let's come back over to our campaigns. Finalizing everything, go to tools, shared library, exclusion list to create negative keyword lists. You can create them directly from your campaign. Find negative keyword ideas using your search terms. You can use either search terms that are irrelevant or search terms that are not getting good enough performance. Add them to the campaign level, add them to the ad group level where it's applicable, and then add anything that you wanna make sure you're not showing up for your account directly to your account level. So sometimes I'll go through my negative keyword list, use that to basically add a bunch of negative keywords to my account as well, specifically more often for e-commerce brands. So this will wrap up negative keywords. If you have any questions, please make sure you leave them in the comment section and make sure you're adding these negative keywords to optimize your campaigns.
Thank you for watching. If you want access to all of my long form tutorials and some of my courses that I've created that I'm only putting out on Surfside Inbound, you can join my Patreon, patreon.com slash Surfside Inbound. It is only $4.99 per month. You can also join through my YouTube channel. So through the Surfside PPC YouTube channel from any of my videos, if you click on join, you will get instant access to all of my premium content, including my inbound marketing course, which is five and a half hours long. I just published it to Patreon and YouTube. So join today if you're interested in more of my content at patreon.com slash surfside inbound or by clicking the join button on any of my youtube videos thanks for watching my channel and don't forget to subscribe